This year marks the 25th anniversary of the Legend of Zelda series, and coincidentally, it's also the year we get a new Zelda game after Twilight Princess came out a long time ago. It's even marked in the intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Nintendo's made a real big deal about that, but we could get to that later. For now, the Skyward Sword uh, promises to use the Wii remote in you know, the way we've always dreamt of. Yeah. Giving us basically a proper sword in our hand, pretty much. Um, does it work? Uh, oh, um, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I should probably uh, start out by saying that it's not the game we have all been dreaming of when it comes to precise, exact control, but it is probably as close to it as we're going to get on, on the current hardware and with the uh, current uh, precision of the, mm. the Wii mode. Um, so yes, it is a Zelda game as we know it, and, and the fighting system is based on you actually uh, swinging the sword with the Wii mode and uh, noticing how the, the, the enemies are trying to parry and, and, and tricking them uh, so that you may defeat them. It becomes almost like a puzzle in itself. It kind of is. Um, most of the enemies, even, even the most basic ones, well, unless we talk about the slimes, of course, mm -hmm. but, but even the most basic ones will try to parry your, your, your attacks. So you can't just waggle, or most mm -hmm. of the time you can't just waggle and, and hope for, for a hit. Um, and that makes the fighting system a bit more strategic than, than, than what is usually known as, as just a button mashing friendly fighting system. Um, and, and it sets up the whole tone of the game, I would mm -hmm. say. So, um, every Zelda game has its own sort of story, continuity, even though Nintendo claims that all the Zelda games are in the same universe and has a sort of timeline. Um, but they're still all different. So what's the setup this time? Well, it, it, I guess it's, it's meant as a prequel to, Ocar to Ocarina of Time. Um, and the story, which isn't like, uh, to start out with at least, uh, that, that heavily emphasized, um, shows you Link and Zelda, of course, uh, and, and how they are friends and, and maybe friends who could at some point in time turn into something more, but, but that's only teased, of course. And uh, without spoiling anything, uh, Zelda is transferred to another world, or I would say kidnapped to another world. And, and Link, who really isn't anything before the game starts out, uh, he's a knight in training, mm. um, dons his, his you know, usual green suit and, and goes on the hunt for, for, uh, for Zelda. Uh, and it's set in the sky this time. Yes, it's set in the sky, which is probably one of the most unique settings for a Zelda game so far uh, in a town called Skyloft, which is uh, a floating city above... Uh, uh, the clouds? The clouds, yes, <laughs> but also above the planet beneath, of course. Um, and um, the first hour or so is, is, is more or less used just talking about how the planet beneath isn't really something that the, the citizens of, of Skyloft wants to think about mm. because they're supposedly played by a lot of demons and stuff like that. And of course, that is the planet where you will have to go down to, to conquer the many dungeons of the game. So, um, there's flying. There's flying, yes, because you're based in the sky. Yeah, um, yeah you have your, your uh, uh, loft wing. Yeah, so Loftwing. Yeah, loft um, that you can control directly with the Wii mode. And I mean, it, 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 when you first take a look at the world map, it, it seems like a huge place full of secrets and, and, and the likes. Unfortunately, as you get to explore, and, and that pretty much is up to yourself, there really isn't as much content in the sky as I would have liked. There mm. are a couple of bonus levels and stuff like that. But it is quite surprising. Um, as you get further on in the main story, it is kind of revealed why. Um, <laughs> and, and, and it shows itself just in the massive, massive uh, exploration that you will have to do to complete the main dungeons of the game. Yeah, so let's talk about those, the dungeons and, and the, the world exploring, I guess, too. Because this is a Zelda game. Yeah. So is it like the same old Zelda or...? It, from the start, it kind of seems like that. Uh, the, the whole build-up of you entering the dungeons are actually, or is actually kind of different because you will usually, or at least again from the start, have to explore um, the whole world outside the dungeon before you actually get to enter the dungeon. And usually the dungeons themselves are actually shorter than, than in previous Zelda games. Mm -hmm. Um, the, puzzles, the puzzles, though, are not as reliant anymore on you pushing blocks or just, you know, uh, turning on lights or some of the, I would say, tried and, and, and tested and, and way overused puzzles of the previous Zelda games. So, uh, in the new Skyward Sword, uh, you will actually have to uh, explore some 
I would say more logical puzzles, meaning that they are more reliant on you using the tools mm -hmm. uh, that you're constantly finding and, and which are really, really cool. Um, so, so you will have to, to you know, just explore more and actually uh, look at your uh, environment uh, to, to find out where you can apply the tools. I, um, I, I played the game as well. Yep. I'm, I'm not that far into it, but the first problem puzzle in the first dungeon, I was stuck on that for over an hour. <laughs> Yeah, yes. puzzle. I couldn't figure that out for the life of me. I had to go cheat and look it up online. Oh, I'm online. sorry. Yeah, I, I actually found most of the puzzles in the game so far uh, pretty logical mm. uh, in the way that they oftentimes um, are based on the tool that you just picked up, or, or at least one of the techniques you just picked up. And, and we should probably go into the tools or the weapons or the equipment <laughs> that you get because it is some of the best tools that you will find in any Zelda game. I mean, mm -hmm. just the, the you, one of the first items you get is like a flying beetle that yep. is kind of a mini chopper that you can just fly around again by waggling your Wii mode. And this, uh, just this beetle can actually be further equipped uh, later in the game because there is an upgrade system, kind mm -hmm. of a cra crafting system, which again is a first for Zelda game, and it actually works. So, so later on you will actually be able to use this tool again, but in completely other ways, and it's really cool. And that goes for all the tools that you pick up. Maybe we should sum up. Um, you know, Zelda, Zelda series, through all its 25 years, uh, has a long history of being you know, awesome, incredible games. Yeah. Um, does the latest Zelda live up to its legacy? Uh, more than that. Mm. Um, I am one of the many people who have felt that, that the Zelda series, uh, the previous installments, the last couple of installments, have become kind of tedious in, mm. in the way that they're all high, high quality games, but they rely too much on the same puzzles that we've tried times and time again. Mm. This new Zelda also does that to a certain extent, but when it gets going, um, after you completed the first couple of dungeons, it really picks up speed. And the way it starts to mix up uh, both uh, the, the, the ways we're usually uh, playing the game, but also with the new tools and stuff like that, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. And it does really have some of the most solid, some of the most uh, amazing and, and creative dungeon design I've ever tried in a Zelda game before. So, Alone for that, for that, you you should give the game a try if you're a Zelda fan. Mm. Um, that being said, all in all, it's also just one of the best Zelda games in a long, long, long time, uh, and and for my money at least, far far better than Twilight Princess.